discussing alone. Yeah, it's our show. Because this thing's kicking my ass right now. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> I thought about just kind of going above and talking up into just it. Just talking but, down. Um, uh, just, uh, yeah, just hope for the best and that it doesn't whack you in the face. <laughs> I don't know what my wife feels like every night. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> wow, well, so what are we doing here? We're, uh, we're going to drink some bourbon. A little Makers 46. Makers 46. We'll uh, try to give our opinion on it and go from biased and just talk some trash. Let's pull up some history on Makers 46. I'm slow. I'm going to open it while you're pulling go up the history. Alright, Makers 46. I read it. I really like the wax seal on it. I think... Yeah. Kind of unique. And they're, since they're the only ones that do it, they kind of have a claim for it, which is kind of nice. I got us a ton of ice, so we're, we're good for a while. Oh, perfect. Um, the bourbon and the distillery's Maker's Mark, 94 proof. Uh, it's about 70% corn, 16% wheat, 14%. Malted barley. So I was doing, I was doing a little pre research. Yeah. And I saw it has something to do with like different wood staves. Like, I don't know if it's French or it was on the website there somewhere, but it's it changes the harshness of it, they say. So it should be more like smoother? Uh, I think that's a very subjective word, but yeah, that generally, I think that's what Makers is trying to tell you is it's going to be smoother. But I, w I wish they had. Kind of like a history, like wine bottles do. Right in the back, it'd be kind of nice. It just says, "Interesting in learning how the unique taste of Maker's Forty Six was achieved." Contact me, and then it gives the guys email at Maker's Mark. What do you think? Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm a bourbon snob yet, so I still think a lot of bourbon tastes similar. You know what I mean? Like, I think some of the other ones we drink have their own unique flavor, but We'll get to them. We'll definitely get to those. <laughs> but um, I think it's a nice, solid bourbon. I mean, oaky. Yeah, definitely tastes the wood. <laughs> There's another <laughs> joke there. <laughs> oh man, it's a good thing the wife's left. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, man, we're we've been planning to do this for a while. Uh, there are fights on tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. I want to know how much weight those guys put back on. I mean, when you cut. I think I told you I saw Dylan Shaw cut 12 He's down pounds. Down 25. So and he cut like 12 pounds since he got in New York. Or he was at 140 the day he flew in. Right. So 15 pounds in a matter of three or four days' time. And apparently he was uh, like he was walking around at 135. Like that's yeah. what he was trying to keep himself before the fight. But usually these guys they walk around a little heavier than that, and then they just dehydrate themselves. Probably not how we're doing it. Definitely not. So you say they can't take IVs anymore, right? They cannot. So you so per SADA doesn't allow them to. So previously they would have put on even more weight just by IVs, right? Like that's just yeah, rehydrating. I don't want to speak without really knowing, but I know there, there's only so much water weight that they allow you to kind of lose and your body eventually, like your liver, starts shutting down. Right. So... There's only so much your body will let you lose, but there's only so much like the Nevada State Commission and all the different state commissions will let you Just lose. Just for health safety. concerns. Yeah. Right. yeah. I saw with Dillashaw, his head nutritionist is some kind of scientist. Like, I mean, that, has yeah. it strictly, he started cutting weight three months ago. Yeah. Like, he, he slowly started trying to get down to that 135, 140 range, then to cut the rest of the water weight. Because I think he was at 8% body fat when he showed up in New York City. I believe it. He so, looked like a skeleton. Did you see pictures of him? Oh yeah, I saw some. I, told you, I saw close ups oh of his God. fingers and his feet, and it looked like he was a prune. Like there was no moisture left. Now, who do you got to win? That's the big question. So, I honestly think TJ will win. He's the heavier guy coming in. You know, it's just it's kind of on him to. It's his fight to lose. If that right. makes sense. Um, but at the same time. I, I'm pretty sure if Cejudo doesn't win, the UFC is getting rid of that whole division. The flyweight division's gone. Really? And not many fighters left? Or I just mean, not, no interest, ton. wrong weight? Or? So for a long time, a very exciting fighter 
t to me, like very technical guy. Uh, his name was Mighty Mouse. Uh, what was his name? Demetrius Johnson. Uh, you know, very technical. Was no one really beat him for a while? Had a very really, really long winning streak, and he wasn't respected as much as he should have been by like the fans. Right. Uh, mainly because why is that? You think smaller guys? They don't. N not a lot of like big hits. Um, and just so because they dodge them, or you know what I mean. They're like, quicker too, but right. uh, it just. It's not the same power as like a heavyweight or a light heavyweight, you know? Right. They're smaller. They're 125 pounds. You know? Still not a guy you want to fuck with in the effort. Oh, absolutely fight. not. No, dude, I'm pretty sure either one of those guys would destroy me, and I have more than 100 pounds on either <laughs> one of them. <laughs> right. Um, but it's, uh, for some reason, the flyweight division just never caught traction. And uh, earlier, or late last year, I keep on forgetting, it's just 2019. Now. Right. Um, late last year, they traded, it was weird, uh, they traded Demetrius Johnson to another fight um, promotion mm -hmm. in Japan, I believe, and they got someone that was over there to fight in the UFC, which is also not without controversy. The guy is, he's undefeated, but he's a wrestler, which is also not the most exciting fight to watch. Right. For the... the general fan you know I'm, I'm I, I tend to get into the, the, the trenches when it comes to fighting I, I enjoy the technical side but to a lot of people it just looks like a guy laying on top of another which one. and I mean as people will start to find out I'm new to the MMA obviously <laughs> you're you're a I'm a fan I'm not gonna say a hardcore but you're you're way more yeah. dedicated to it than me I, I'm a casual watcher but yeah for sure like the the grappling and the the wrestling is not near as exciting as the Striking. The, the striking yeah. and the kickboxing or whatever other disciplines they have, hand and feet, you know, a flurry of punches and kicks is, is way more exciting to watch than... Everyone wants to see a knockout. Exactly. It's true. That is just true. What was the guy's name that uh, was talking about Trump called him and told him he had... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, oh Derek, uh, Derek Lewis. Yes. He that's is... my favorite dude. I mean, that guy is like, national you, treasure. Why are you taking your shorts off? My balls was hot. <laughs> I mean, relatable guy problems. Like, every guy's been there. Are you on Instagram? I'm not. Oh my I God. should be. You should be just to follow Derek Lewis. <laughs> so, like, a lot of his posts, which are usually people getting hurt and doing stupid stuff. Right. They get taken down. So, like, a lot of his posts, they're up there for, like, I don't know, a few hours or maybe a few days. And then Instagram's like, oh, no, we can't show that. <laughs> but Not safe for work. The funniest Instagram account to follow and after that fight I think he like doubled his follower uh, count or whatever. Well, I mean his post interview was just <laughs> epic. And they usually are. So the, he's been doing that for a while and when people ask him he's just like oh you guys always ask me the same questions I get bored so I'm just trying to entertain myself which is hilarious. Obviously but yeah. But like a while back <laughs> I remember he won. And I forgot what the question was, and he just goes, where's Ronda Rousey's fine ass at? And I'm like, that's amazing. Yes. Good work. But uh, he is hilarious. Derek Lewis is by far one of my favorite fighters, and he is, he makes it very clear that he's only fighting for the money. Which, which I can appreciate. Right. I mean, you're getting your ass whooped monthly, <laughs> daily. Before, before you You better fall. pay. Did you ever put the video together from the uh, cruise we took? No, but I have all the files saved on the computer now. But I, I, yeah, I, I need to give you guys that. Do you have any video of somebody jumping off the ship? Right. Well, apparently it's been happening a lot lately. Another one? Uh, yeah, some guy on a Royal Caribbean jumped off the 11th store, or 11th floor, 110 feet down. His friends recorded him. He didn't die. I mean, he, had, he, he went in with some kind of grace. Like, he didn't belly flop, obviously, but... Cannonball. <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> But they uh, kicked him off, banned him for life, shipped him back to the uh, thing. Uh, See, that's the shitty part. But I would totally jump off one just to say I did. You don't think you would? I thought about it. We were cruising through the Gulf, and the water looked nice and calm, you know. But then... When Not you at night. Up, I wouldn't do it at night. No. But right is like, when I walked up to the edge and saw how fast we were actually moving. What is that thing? Alright. It's buzzing. It's vibrating. Oh well, we'll be all right. But yeah, when I saw how fast we were moving, that made me not want to jump off moving. Like you realize how somebody's instant death. 
Yeah, Rob was telling us it takes a mile to turn those ships around, remember? Yeah, I mean, they definitely don't have analogs. I mean, you're <laughs> <laughs> trying to wall it up with no good way to wall it up. Can you imagine also, like, just slamming on a brake with everyone on board? Believe it or not, I was waiting for that. Like, every night in the middle of the night, I would wake up thinking, when's the sudden stop coming? <laughs> when's the tanker pulling out in front of us? Who jumped out? <laughs> No, there was Where's also the, entrance money? the autistic kid that jumped out um, uh, uh, the carnival one, right? He missed the dolphin petting in Cozumel, saw an opportunity. Saw some dolphins. Saw some dolphins, didn't work out. Ben probably told him to do it. <laughs> Good morning passengers, this is Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the boys from above. <laughs> let's go for a swim. So let's check out the uh, John Wick Three. John Wick 3, yeah. Okay. Trailer. Parabellum. So, 9 millimeter, obviously. Favorite round. So, the first two were pretty awesome. I guess. Yeah, what's it? What's his kill count? Like 112, I, I think. I want to say most of them were in the second one. Like, the second one was insane. Oh, he went ape shit. Yeah. I mean, just 10 guys at a time. Sounds like a dirty movie. <laughs> <laughs> then they call it a bukkake. He's an odd, odd character, man. Keanu Reeves. He is, but he's a badass. Yeah, but I also still see him sometimes as like the Bill and Ted guy, who's just a goofball, you know? Or, um... I still see him as the speed guy. Which, granted, he was still a badass in that movie. Yeah, was he Speed or Speed 2? Speed 2 was the He boat. was in Speed 1. Speed he's 2. He's the bus, right? Yeah, he was the bus. Speed 2 still had Sandra Bullock. He had that other cop. I forget his name. Okay. He didn't make it very long. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen those. And he's also in, um... That guy was a badass. Sam, uh, not Samuel Jackson. Um... Morpheus. I forget his name. Uh, Warren's Fishburne. That's it. He's, uh... Have you ever seen Apocalypse Now? The, the war movie? No. So it's, uh, I think, Lawrence Fishburne's first movie. He's a super young in it. And a lot of my friends were like, that's not him. And I was like, look at that Michael Strahan smile. That's totally him. <laughs> you know, he's How got like the gap. Right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check with Oh, uh, yeah, this is going to be good. So what's Parabellum? Non-millimeter Parabellum. So it's just a, a caliber. Right. Basically. I'm, not very good with the whole weapons thing. Oh, I, I'm good with I mean, I feel like that's what it is, but let's let's look up the definition of parabellum. Parabellum? Yeah, are you got it there yet? Yeah. For prepare for war. Okay. In Latin. So, but then obviously right underneath it you have the 9 by 19 And then it says pistol or machine gun right there too. So, okay. uh, have you ever looked up the Latin on what's on his back? No. For John Wick? Yeah. So it, check it, check it out. It's actually, I never, I, I want, I'm looking to get a tattoo, but I don't want to get a copycat tattoo. But okay. this one's pretty bitching. Like, if he didn't have it, it'd be a great one to have. And I'm sure some college dudes who got on there got it because it's on John Wick's back. But what does John Wick's tattoo mean? Fortis Fortuna. Uh, is it Fortune favors the bold? Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? Yep. I took uh, two years of Latin in high school because uh, I already spoke Portuguese. Right. So I figured I did not want to speak Spanish. And I was like, uh, you know, my parents forced me to take languages, and I guess the state kind of did too. <laughs> and I was like, what's a language that I'm never going to have to speak? Latin. And that did me no fucking good at all. Like when Tombstone comes on, you know what they're saying. In the bar scene, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, you would. Yeah, in Vino I mean, Veritas, I mean, in one, in there's one truth. truth. You I know, know that, that one. Yeah, but like my, my knowledge of uh, of Latin now is essentially for like useless shit like this. Have you seen the Boondock Saints? Yes. That's a great fucking movie. Yes, I mean. That could, so we I had to downloaded it for the the cruise. I downloaded a few movies to take with us. Becca refused to watch that. Like, Why? I don't know. She's like, this seems boring. What's bad about two Catholic brothers going around just wasting gangsters? No idea. And William yeah. Defoe was as gay as a three dollar bill on that too. Was he? I don't. I mean, you remember he was like sleeping with uh, that's another right. one of the agents. Yeah, I remember now. And then once that it's been a while since I've seen it. It's been like seven or eight years. There's a second one. 
Never saw it. Really? I didn't know there was a second one. I haven't seen it either. Usually sequels suck. I really can't get my wife to watch those kind of movies. Like, like John Wick is the extreme. I got her to watch Equalizer 2 that was, two nights ago. The first one was great. I haven't seen the second one yet. First one, A+. Plus. Second one, story never just kind of did it for me. Like, it, it was okay. That's a shame. Yeah, I mean, he still killed plenty of people. They're still like, I mean, Denzel is, in my book, one top five actors. Like, yeah. he plays, remember the Titans. I mean, yeah. great story, great acting. He was also the he was in, out of time. Yes. That's pretty good, too. Pretty good. I mean, like, everything he does, I feel like he brings a game. American Gangster, have you seen that? Yes. That's another great one. Yeah. True story, too. Yes. I mean, but really, name a bad movie that he's in. Like... I'm sure you can. Let's see. Let's see. But it takes some work. I mean, most of I can't off the top of my head now. I'm sure every actor in their career, I mean, they've done some, some Scream junk. Scream 7 or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, of all those movies. Although I don't know if Denzel would do. Scream. Filmography. Jesus. It's his own separate page. Okay, so we're just going to look past the 80s and 90s because there was a lot of shit back then. That's fair. So, 2000. Remember the Titan, Training Day, John Q, which every dad can relate to. Yeah, out of time. A man on Fire. Man on Fire. I always got those two confused. They're very similar to me for some reason. Yeah, I'm thinking like all those. Two Guns with Mark Wahlberg. Great movie. Have, oh, I told you it's kicking my ass. <laughs> um, Magnificent well, Seven was pretty decent. I mean, it wasn't great, like but the, it was pretty good. It that's was, with uh, Chris Pratt, right? Yeah, it was a remake of the old one. Back I didn't know was a, there was an original. Really? Yeah. It's well, one of the most iconic westerns of all time. I agree. When my grandpa came here for our wedding, I told you that he essentially would just tell me to leave the women so we can hang out in the theater and watch westerns. Nice. And he's as deaf as a fucking doorknob, so like... Had a crank. That was his favorite room, because he could actually hear the nice. you know, whatever they were saying. Um... Those, I, I definitely had, so I had your subwoofer plugged in as well. Right. And uh, my mom was like, don't your neighbors complain? Yeah. I was like, I don't think they hear anything. Like, by now, they would have complained, you know? I mean, I will say, for those of y'all that don't know, we are neighbors. <laughs> um, like, three houses down. As much complaints as we might have about our houses, they are insulated pretty well. Yeah. I mean. They did that part pretty well. I mean, they did that part well. It's, uh. What they spared on yards. It's yeah, yeah. towards insulation. Well, so, did you come here before it was all built? When it was just like flat land? No, so, I'll tell you the story after you're done about how I came about my house. So, all of this, dude, it was, I guess the people that live all the way up front, not in the development, the farm, I guess it was a farm. Right. They sold all this property to whoever the builder was at the time, I think Ryland, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and when we came to check out the lots, everything was level and flat and about the same level as like halfway down to the retaining pond behind my house. And then, so we're like, all right, this sounds awesome. Like our yard was supposed to be pretty flat. And then a month into building, once they started grading everything up, there's a ditch in the backyard. And I was like, dude, what, what the fuck did you guys do to my yard? <laughs> But, yeah, city uh, codes. Yeah, right. But yeah, so they, they kind of, I think they kind of screwed everyone. I, oh. I don't think they were, I don't think they planned it very well. Their landscaping drainage plan was shit from the start. Yeah. But. So how'd you come about your house? So we were living in a townhouse, mm -hmm. like most couples before we started out. I'm on the road traveling, going to Daytona, and I'm giving my wife a price range. I say, this is your price range from like, say, A to C, dollar okay. figure. She texts me, hey, I've got this great place I just found. It's like, okay, send it to me. We're in like price range F. I'm like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> She's like, but it's a great buy. I mean, how many guys are gonna like to that? Yeah. Hey, we gotta do this. Uh, so here I'm thinking, hey, this might actually work in my favor. You know, I might get a little something out of this deal besides the house. No, I didn't. I mean, I got a house. <laughs> that's that's kind of about the same. When uh when we did the build the building meeting for this house, 
I actually had to work. So we were at the design studio, and Becca was just coming by and just like showing me stuff. She's like, this is our sh Oh, so you got to design. Like you picked your fixtures out, your colors, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, well, Becca did. I was uh, physically there. Right. But um, it was kind of nice. The girl that actually was working at the design studio at the time helped us out a lot. Because we had priced the, the, the first floor with like just legit hardwood. And the girl's like, you're spending a lot of money just for those hardwood floors. Do you really give a shit about them? Like it, she had a little more tact that I don't I have. That's the gist of it was. But yeah. Do you have dogs? Yes. So, Why worry about it? Literally what she said. She's like, your dogs are going to scratch the shit out of those floors in yeah. like about a month. And I was like, uh, yeah, let's not do that. So it's a... Uh, we switched to the wood laminate, which still looks nice. Right. Oh, and that's what uh, I have. It looks good, I think. Right. Uh, it's And you... As it becomes scratched, you replace it. Who gives a shit? So what's the company that sends us all the offers? Because I'm sure everybody out there gets them. The uh, the offers for you to buy your house, we're like, they'll, they'll send you the offer immediately once you give them a little bit of info. You know what you, the company I'm talking about. Um, hell, I've got like two in the past three weeks. Whatever it is, it's this company. And they basically try to say they'll buy your house, no questions asked, within 30 days with a competitive offer. Okay. Quote. So my mom, they've been talking about selling their house, my mom and dad, and she's like, all right, let's just see what they say. So I think they, I mean, their house is, I think on the Zestman or whatever you want to go off of was 260. Okay. So this place sent them a estimate or an offer at 242. So already 18,000 down. Yeah. And then also, you have to pay a $15,000 fee for using them. Okay. So, subtract 15 off of that, and then they have to come in with their inspector, and anything they feel is a repair above and beyond, you have to pay for that too on top of what you get out of your house. You can suck my jolly <laughs> dick on that one. Exactly. Yeah, so, thanks. you went from getting 240 dollars from your house to you're walking away with... 215 maybe if that yeah if that depending on the repairs on a two hundred and sixty thousand dollar house fuck that yeah so i forget what I'll, I'll look next time i'll have a name for you but yeah whatever this company is check your mail i'm sure becca probably throws away before you see it <laughs> before, but, she filters my stuff yeah, yeah I, i've looked at it and wondered i wonder how legit the open door that's what open it is door. yeah it's called open door fucking rip off <laughs> i just call oh, it what it is fuck it yeah, yeah. Rip off. No. I'm sure somebody out there got some money when they're in a pension, they're going to say it's the greatest thing ever. But anybody that has equity, yeah, that wants to get their equity, <laughs> oh, exactly. Don't use open door. It's, uh, everyone's just looking to get one over on any, everyone, and it's, it's a fucking shame. I mean, it's almost like the American economy. Who can screw who the best is the wealthiest. I mean, Dude. Right? Yeah, and, and not to get too like political or into economy at all, but like, how long until you think this crashes? The We're housing market or the, or the current government shut down? Well, dude, we, we rack up debt like like a fat kid in a cupcake score. Like, you know what I mean? Just like people in general, you're saying? Or like the Americans? Country. The country. Like, we're, we're in the trillions and, and going up. I thought I thought Trump, and, and I'm a little naive on some of this. I mean, I, I, try to, I try to stay up on it, but I don't yeah. do a good job. But I thought Trump had lowered the national debt or deficit since he's been in office. Is, it, is that he not may, the case? I, I'm not sure. Can we look that up? Yeah. Is that something, a stat we can pull up here? I'm sure. Let's see. Um... Rises to twenty one point seven trillion. Okay, so Shit. obviously I've been reading the wrong news. Did you see that go? That guy that started a GoFundMe for the wall. No. So yeah, there's a. I'm not. I'm, I'll search it so I don't sound stupid. Uh, but I believe he's ex-military. Okay. Uh, so this guy. He started. Um, Brian Colfage, Colfage. Yeah, and it, it's a cool video. And, and if you, uh, I wish I believed in something as much as this guy gives a shit about it. When it comes to government, I don't. You know what I mean? Right. Like save the manatees, still above the fucking wall for me. But uh, this guy essentially uh, 
just started a GoFundMe for the wall and it actually raised quite a bit of money, I think, already. Like 20 million of oh, a 1 shit. billion goal. Yeah, like people are going to this. Mean, so what I, what I do think this says though is obviously it matters to a lot of people. I mean, yeah. 20 million dollars, 20.7 million is a lot of money. Absolutely. I mean, so I realize we have how many people are in the U.S.? Uh, Let's pull that up. I mean, Let's, so uh, we don't want to sling untrue facts here. But keep in mind, those are just probably, oh Jesus. So, okay, so 325.7 million as of 2017. So maybe 328 by now, right? Yeah. Assuming like births. Well, probably more because all those government employees have been staying at home, so we're probably yeah. gonna have a baby boom here in about nine months. That's that's hilarious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, what are we doing? We don't have to go to work. Let's fuck. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna stay home and work tomorrow and see how that works for me. Right. That's. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. Well, right now it's doing me no good. <laughs> been there, done that, if you will. <laughs> right. But um, that's also not accounting for. You gotta keep in mind. There's. Like it or not, a fairly large undocumented population here. I think it's a very large. You know, like what I, mean? I, I don't know that we know the full scope of yeah, the amount so of undocumented aliens. That number, I don't, I don't know how skewed it is. There's only 36 million in Canada. Fuck you, Canada. A lot of open fields up there, right? evidently. But who wants to live in negative 37 weather? You know. Yeah, so my father-in-law lives in Michigan. In the winter, <laughs> in the winter time, they put their milk in the garage. That's how cold it is. I told him, I said, I promise you, I will never live somewhere that my milk can stay in the garage instead of a refrigerator. There are places that I would that get like that. Okay, like, maybe I moved to Colorado. Colorado. Exactly. Right. Maybe there, but not desolate but, Michigan or Canada or bumfuck up somewhere up in the top of that map right there. Yeah, like I had job offers in Ohio. And I was just like, nope, not moving there. That's ah, kind of the armpit of the world, though. Sorry, Ohioans. It's true, Maybe. but like it's it, other than the hunting, really good hunting. I'll give yeah, them that. There are some big deer up there. But it's like it's fucking miserable in the, in the the winter. I was there for work like February through April. Fuck that! Like you just look at like desolate fields, and it's just like oh. This is very depressing. I'm really surprised me about Ohio's is when we drive through there going to Michigan. Southern Ohio, like right up kinda of like the West Virginia border area. Yeah. I'm talking I mean, you would think poverty is I mean, it seems like probably six out of ten households are in poverty. Really? Oh yeah. It's it's crazy when you drive through southern Ohio, but then not it doesn't seem like hundred miles north of there. Back to a pretty uh, affluent, you yeah. know, middle-income type families, but there are some nice cities. Apparently, so where was I in Ohio? I was in Cleveland, which, you know, the city of Bronville. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. So when I was there, actually, it was the year LeBron had just won the championship, and I believe the RNC was coming to town. So. They literally, the week before I got there, tore down all the LeBron posters from town to put like RNC shit up. And people from town were fucking furious. LeBron was like their god at the moment. And they're like, oh, we're putting this up for fucking Trump. It was uh, the week the RNC was there, my client at the time essentially told me not to travel there that week. She's like, oh, we're expecting like full on riots. Don't, don't come up. Really? Yeah. I know it's not bad. Yeah, it's uh, it ended up not being that bad because most people are all talk talk, talk anyway. But uh, that was a weird project. Also, during that project is when the Charlotte riots happened. Ooh. And uh, my client had no idea how like far off of Charlotte we are. I mean, we're about an hour, like forty minutes from Charlotte, off town, right? Uh, so <laughs> the day, the day. All that stuff happened at night where they were like getting on 77 and protesting. And right, flipping cars over. And uh, <laughs> my client the next morning, like, I think, yeah, I had an email very early in the morning. She's like, I know you have two girls. 
you need to go down and be with your girls and this and that. And me being me, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I do later. <laughs> I just took the you. next flight. I was out of there. So, funny story about the Charlotte riots. A guy I work with, Australian. Mm -hmm. New to the city. Just moved to Charlotte. Uptown condo. Gets out of work, drives home. He's like, fuck it. I really don't want to cook. I'm going to go out for a beer tonight. <laughs> so, he's leaving his, the front front door and he hears this noise and he, I mean he's not plugged into the national media so he's like this fucking microphone he's like <laughs> fix that. he's like there's a uh, there's gotta be like something going on a concert or something so a he concert goes, and he goes he has no clue so he goes walking to the noise he turns a corner and on his left are all these people screaming and on his right is the CMPD in full riot gear and he's standing directly in the middle 20 yards from each one, standing in the middle, looking back and forth. And all he wanted was some food. All he wanted was some tacos <laughs> and beer. <laughs> he said he was scared shitless. I, I mean, just totally didn't understand what was going on. Threw his hands up and ran. Jesus. I mean, That's fair, dude. But how would you like to be in another country, you know? You walk out trying to get some grub, beer. I'm from Brazil, man. I feel his pain. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like Someone, so speaking of being from Brazil, which is kind of hilarious, because like, I'm... I like to say I'm undercover white. You know, like <laughs> right. most people are just like, that's just a fucking white dude. I mean, you're not as tan <laughs> as I would say most Brazilians are. Right? So I mean, I, I might be uneducated, but... I lived in Jersey for a while, so like... So you're saying that held you down a little bit. Held me down, but uh, someone was talking to me, and they were just like, you fucking Trump supporter, this and that, and I'm like, technically, he would send my ass out of here. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure I'm his favorite person. Right? But it's just fun to, like, troll people on that. Because, like, you cannot disagree with anyone now. And you're immediately a Nazi or a Trump supporter if you disagree with anyone now. Which is fucking bonkers. Which I told you. That's why uh, I like that Ben Shapiro guy. Even if you don't agree with him on... He's sharp. He is sharp and he just likes to, he likes to argue. He likes to debate. So even if you don't like him or his opinion, his debate skills... Or yeah. second to none. Absolutely. I mean, he could shred anybody, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'd like to see him, him and Eminem debate. <laughs> that would be a great debate. Put a little beat on it. I mean, you'd have a hell of a rap song. An Eminem diss track, too. Venture he would Europe. do way better than MGK did trying to diss Eminem. Yeah, so I'm not a big... I'm not big into hip hop, especially like newer stuff. The stuff right. that I listen to is like early '90s nonsense. Right. Um, but the beat to like MGK's song was kind of cool. It was okay. I mean, it's I can say it was. It, it, it flowed pretty good in the car. But like, I couldn't get what he was like, how he was saying stuff, and it's also not my type of. I'm a metalhead, so like. Right out of my scope entirely. But Eminem is very, he's enjoyable. Like, I think I like any music as long as it's angry, because I'm Oh, and he's angry. Right, up. yeah, fair. But, uh, yeah, like, it's just, it's it seems like it's definitely, like, two very different leagues of songs between those diss tracks. It was, it was entertaining to well, say. Well, and I think, I was watching this review, and... A guy brought up a really good point that Eminem can't make just a straight diss track. He has too many fans. He's too commercialized. Like if he goes out there and just makes a grunge in his garage esque diss track, it's gonna get rejected. It wasn't yeah. polished enough. It wasn't up to his standard. Where Keep in mind that his garage is probably a very <laughs> <nice studio. laughs> fair enough. So he can't make that. Uh, a B studio diss track, we'll say. He uh -huh. has to come up with a polished you know, cut 345, whatever the the length is, like, it's got to be these parameters. That's what his standard is. Where this mm -hmm. other guy, MGK, could basically, could go to his garage, because that's probably where he did it at, and yeah. and just whatever came to mind, whatever beat he came up with, that was, that was good enough for that day. That's fair. So He's from Ohio, I'm pretty sure. I think he is. Speaking of Ohio, <laughs> I'm pretty well, sure we he's go. from Ohio. Uh, maybe Cleveland, even. MGK. I don't know, Eminem said he had more fans than he did in his own town. Probably. Eminem's been doing this for a Cleveland, long time. Cleveland, Ohio, right there. Look at that. I was there. As much as I hate to hate, like, I love to hate on Ohio, like, Cleveland had really good, like, microbreweries and stuff. 
Really? And the food, like, I love Polish food. Like, I love fucking, uh, what are those called? Um, God damn it. Uh, the potato things. Gnocchi? Not gnocchi. Uh, Let's look it up. Polish food. Do we have any good Polish food around here? Um, I, I hate to say I haven't gone out looking for it. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked, but um, what the hell are those things? Polish called? classic. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, like there is a Polish girl in my freshman room, like freshman dorm volleyball player and she was hot as shit <laughs> and uh, one day this is a true story so one day um, just hanging out in my room I'm, I'm probably taking a nap actually um, and there's a knock on the door and I, I like it's not my roommate like why the fuck my roommate knock on the door so I go to answer and it's this fucking Polish volleyball player in her towel, like straight from the shower, and she goes, Hey, my roommate locked me out, and I don't have any like clothes and this and that. And at the time, I had a girlfriend, which fucking sucks. But I think <laughs> I threw her like gym shorts and a fucking undershirt, and I just go, It's not my birthday yet. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> And completely blew that opportunity because did uh, she come in and change at least? I yeah, like a like a like a true gentleman. I gave her her space, but I kind of wish I didn't. Is that bad to say? Like I have a daughter now. I should probably not say <laughs> that, but it's so true. She was fucking gorgeous. Uh, I don't know what this Polish thing is called. We actually have some frozen little fucking things in our freezer right now. And I can't tell you what the fuck's called. So, I think this is Polish. I'm not sure. Maybe you can correct me. But when we raced in uh, Wisconsin. Okay. I feel like there's a big Polish community up there near the Sheboygan area. Maybe. German for sure. Uh, maybe that's what it was. But they, So, they had the Friday Fish Fry. Okay. And I feel like, uh, I know it's probably stereotyping, but the restaurant <laughs> we went to, they had the full-on polka music. Yeah. The wooden dance floor out there in the middle. But it was Friday Fish Fry, and basically, it seemed like all the businesses in the area shut down early, and everybody went to these, like, six or seven restaurants in town. Just hang out. It was like a whole community type thing, but it was a fish fry. So the driver took us, because he'd been there before, and the best walleye I've ever eaten. Fuck yeah. But it was... I wonder how the fights are going. So I almost got ESPN Plus today. On here? Mainly because they have a free trial. <laughs> but, I was like, uh, Josh and I are just talking shit. I don't know if we're going to have the fights and pay attention to it in the background. Eventually. We'll work to that. Yeah, that's fine. But, you know, I was like, Becca, Becca was like, oh, I'm pretty sure you're going to get it. She looked at ESPN+. Plus. So this is retarded. And I use that word as, like, stupid, if, it, if not offensive at all. I'm probably in the spectrum of autism. You know. <laughs> Fair. Good, good, good disclaimer. No, knowing me, anyway. how much you know now, like it's fair to say I'm likely in the spectrum. You know? <laughs> right, yeah. But uh, anyway, so they have the, the, the early prelims on ESPN Plus. Okay. And then they have, which is, I'm assuming is like four fights or so. Then they'll have the prelims on regular ESPN. So there's early prelims, mm -hmm. and then prelims. And then the main card is on ESPN Plus again. Isn't that stupid? So how many fucking fights are there tonight? We could check it out, but like, the card is, I'm assuming probably like 12, so How much fights. money do you think the UFC actually makes tonight? Like not the fighters, but the company themselves. Oh Jesus, I don't know. Like when when it's pay per views, I'm assuming it's a little easier to measure. But so so let, let let's see what their revenue is like. 
So UFC is probably getting paid for viewers, right? Attendance, right. general attendance to the Which live is event. probably like the, the, the least they get paid is the general attendance, right? Like that's Br In Brooklyn, though, um, I don't know if they're surcharging that. Like the, so, I mean, their box office has got to be... I mean, if it's a million dollars, I'd be surprised. That's fair. But then... So let's say that covers a lot of the fighters. Because most fighters are not. I mean, yeah, most of these, most of the early undercards are. I mean, they're probably getting paid with thirty, forty thousand to fight. If if that, I would assume. If Which that. is kind of sad. You're eating fucking knuckles for a living. <laughs> for no money. <laughs> for thirty grand. Fuck you. What the fuck? What is this? ESPN. So, yeah, it is this. Greg Hardy. So one, two. Three, four, Three, five, four six. five, six. That's a fucking amazing fight, by the way. Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Osovich. Both of them are amazing fighters. Which one was the blonde? With? The pretty blonde. Paige Van Zandt. Yeah, she's pretty good she looking. Was gorgeous. Uh, both of them are hotter than any ring girl. Like the girls that are Taking actually just like nobody's business. Right. Uh, so what do we got? Five, six. Seven. That's another good fight. Eight. Oh, Cowboys nine, are right. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Are these already over? Yeah. So these are highlights. So, so thirteen fights total. It looks like. So three of them are already over, right? What yeah. I'm here. So those are the early prelims. Some of the prelims looks like they're been done. Um, these are pretty good fighters too. The call Calderwood, I believe is her name. I've seen her fight before. Fucking Cerrone, man. The, uh, the the only issue is Cerrone's been fighting for a long time. And they're starting to kind of like feed him to the young lions. I've noticed that. Like his record's going and getting worse uh, and worse and worse. He won his last fight against uh, a, a pretty good guy like Mike Perry. Platinum Mike Perry, I believe is what he goes by. And he's, he's actually... A really fun guy to watch, man. And Cerrone beat him. Uh, the guy went to train at his old gym. Really? And Cerrone's been there for like years and years and years. And the gym essentially picked the new guy. They were like, Cerrone, you're kind of on the way out, man. You're getting older. That's and, all fucked uh, up. Right? And Cowboy's got this ranch that he just like built. And he has his own like fighting compound in there. Right. So he just trained in there and beat the shit out of Platinum Perry, which was kind of fun to watch. Yeah. Now I've seen that guy in person. He's came to a race before. Cowboy. So yes. He's not a little guy. No, he does not <laughs> seem like a little guy. He's not a little dude. I mean, he seems six foot to me. Like he was, he was taller than me when I. Maybe I was off that day. But. I think he fights at one fifty five. So let's say he's like 185 walking around. Yeah, he was no little guy. Yeah, that's, he seems like an awesome guy. Dude. So uh, he's got some cool stories. Uh, if you go online, you can actually see uh, he, ha he does like scuba diving and all sorts of cool shit. And uh, apparently, very recently, he went on a scuba diving trip where he almost died. <laughs> Like, his air got disconnected, and some dude did some crazy shit where you're not supposed to, like, I don't know, I, I don't know, I know nothing about diving, but right. apparently it was, like, pretty bad to the point that, like, he was worried. Like, he has a new kid, he has a baby, like, young, younger than yours, actually. Really? And, uh, he was, uh, he was in a podcast saying how... The, the last thing he, he thought about was like his kid getting back home to his kid and his wife. I was like, yeah, fuck diving. Like, I don't need to do that. <laughs> good, good topic, though. Diving? No, <laughs> close. <laughs> well, could, potentially. When was the last time you had one of those thoughts? Like, what was the situation where you thought, I hope I make it back? Well, so lately for me, man, I, I get super anxious. Like, I've been having, like, anxiety attacks just because of work, the general nature of my job. Uh, and I'll get, like, chest pains. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I, I, I need to kind of 
calm myself down to be there for the girls. Yeah. I've, 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 I've kind of had something similar. Like, panic attacks are scary shit. Like, I don't think people give them enough justice. Yeah. Like, everybody thinks you're kind of weak or whatnot, but I'm telling you, we went to Disney World one time, and we did the whole drinking around Epcot, drinking around the world, you know, so I had acid reflux or something, but it was chest pain. I mean, it hurt. Like, in, it, in the middle of the night, you're kind of tipsy. I'm not going to say wasted, but... <laughs> kind of wake up and get all this chest pain and it won't go away. Right. You're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, I mean, Disney, yeah. but you're not in your home. And I'm telling you, it is the most freaked out I've been in a long time. And, but it was it was a panic attack is what it basically, it, it kind of compounded. It was kind of like a, all the acid reflux or whatever, but then the panic attack set in and I just knew, like, this was it. I'm telling you, that's some scary. This was it. Yeah, this dude, is it. I'm gonna die right here. This is my Christmas <laughs> room in Disney World. Like not how I anticipated going out. Maybe in a pool of sharks, you know, with a leg go bleeding, <laughs> but not in Disney World in a Princess Tiana room. That's a pretty good place to go, I think. <laughs> I mean, had the stars above me inside. I mean, I was ready for it, but no. I mean, panic attacks are real. That's. No, and, I, and I have seen a lot of professional athletes that came out and said, hey, I've experienced this. And I mean, this shit is, it sucks. I mean, like, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are. No. Like, it's real. Yeah. Stress is a motherfucker. <laughs> it, it doesn't it's matter. Motherfucker. No, there, there, there are definitely days. So lately I've been reading a lot more about, like, meditation and trying to just learn breathing exercises just to calm the fuck down. Um, you just heard the dogs. No, they don't. Laying out on the door. Yeah. Fat asses. <laughs> um, no, um, but I, I th this year I'm trying to wean myself off of just being as stressed out and imposing all that stress and panic and that shit on myself. I don't really like to take medicine. Like, I, I hate taking even an aspirin. Really? Yeah, I'd See, rather I go to sleep. Take, I really don't want to take any of that panic. Or not, I don't want to say panic. That's, I don't want to take any of the stress or the anxiety medicines. Like, I feel like it's going to make me go comatose. And my wife's like, right? it's, you're not comatose. You're still you. But it's, uh, I think it's a male psyche thing. You you don't want to be... She's in that industry, though. So. <laughs> she's in that industry. <laughs> she's a pharmacy tech. But but at the end of the day, I feel like I'm going to I'm gonna have this like out-of-body experience. Like I'm going to walk around all day beside myself like... Hey, what are you doing over there? You know, like, I feel like that's what that's what it's going to be like. And that's probably naive of me, but I feel no. like that's what it's going to be like. I don't want to be that way. I feel like that medicine, and this is, I guess, my opinion, like, a lot of it kind of makes you just be a drone. You know what I mean? You're just, you're not really dealing with the actual issue. You're just taking something to be able to function. Correct. Within the issue. And I don't think that's right. Uh, and I, I, I say a lot of ridiculous shit, and I don't want to lose my edge, uh, which is kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it, it worries me, and, and I've seen people that get into the anxiety medicine and, and the depression medicine, and they become so dependent on that to, like, function every day. I don't want that. I think I have, I have seasonal depression. Yeah. Which, I th and I thought that was a crazy thing, but my sister-in-law, believe it or not, she lived in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Come Winters. In, and come winter time, just yeah. being snowed in and how long the darkness was, she actually was talking to my wife about it. And I said, you know, realistically, come every November, November to late January, like oh. those three months for me are always the worst. And I don't oh, know yeah. if it's winter, the short days, or what it is, but it's just like this... Like blue feeling. Yeah. Every day, even if it's a good day, it's just like, oh shit, it's another short day of nights here already. Like, it's like a seasonal depression because, like, in the winter or in the summertime, when it's daylight till 9 30, it's beautiful up there, I'm sure, too. Oh, and yeah, up there it's even hell, it's daylight till almost 10 o'clock. But down here, or you know, just something about the winter time, I think. Like, I've always wanted to die in the summer. Kind of a morbid <laughs> thought. Like, I don't think. Like, don't want to die in the winter time. Like, let me have a long day. <laughs> let me get all of it. 
I guess it depends how old I am. Like if I'm, I don't think I'll make it past 60. That's an honest fact. I, I, I think I'm like 58 is what I'm aiming for. I don't, yeah, so that, like, that's a solid goal. So what is that, 31? Yeah, 27 years, I'm, I'm out. Right. Uh, they, uh, Becca hates it when I say stuff like this, but like, I'm like 60, that's that's a hefty goal for me at this <laughs> month. It's, it just feels like you're playing overtime at that time, you know what I mean? I would agree. And it, it sucks because that's like your retirement age and you should, those are your golden years. Fuck that. Like, I'd rather have my years now than when I'm old and like having to fucking wear the pens and piss myself. <laughs> Right? Would you go skydiving when you're 65? Absolutely. Really? Just, just because I should already be dead. So what, <laughs> what's there to lose? <laughs> right? I mean, I don't want to go today. And, so you're playing on borrowed time. Yeah, I'm already playing on borrowed time. I don't want to go today and cut myself 30 years <laughs> short. Now, 65, I'm bailing. That's fair. Travis Pastrana, no parachute, Red Bull. All right. Let's do yeah. that. If we make it to 65, let's do that. Because I think we're the same age, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something. 31, 32, 30, somewhere I'll in there. I'll be 31 in a little bit. I got, so I got a year on you. So I'll go when I'm 66. And I'll go 65 and you go 64. I'm cool with that. Because I, I still don't think I'll make it past 60. Chest pains, dude. I feel them. Like, so Mondays, and this is not even like joking around, but like I'll like the shower that I take before work. I literally just hang out in the shower and I'm like, fuck my life. Like, Monday again? <laughs> it's like, all right, well, I guess I woke up. Let's fucking get this going. But, like, it's fucking rough. And, whew, I don't know. I don't know how many more Mondays I. I <laughs> you don't know how many more Mondays you have in you? You know? So, how about, I think, God, it sucks. It might be the worst thing ever. So, this time of year, they like for us to work six days a week. Yeah. So they take our Saturdays from us. That yeah, sucks. That's so <laughs> they came to us yesterday. Said, "Hey, if you feel like you need to work, work tomorrow." If you feel like you need to work. Yeah. I said, "I definitely feel like I don't need to work." So yeah. see you I'll next see Saturday. You I'm keeping my last Saturday. Fuck yeah. When do you start traveling? Uh, let's pull up the calendar real quick. Let's see here. <laughs> It's looking like uh, February 8th this year. Okay. But as far as I know, I go to Day Daytona February 8th, come back for three days, go back down for six more days. To Daytona? Yeah. And okay. then no travel for a while. That's pretty good. First time. And I'm kind of I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands because it's the first time in 14 years I haven't traveled full time. Fuck. 14 years of traveling at least 25 weekends a year. And this is the first time that I'm going to travel to Daytona. And after that, I might not travel again the rest of the year. And traveling seems like a great thing to do for work. Until you do it. Until you do it. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. And like, there are perks. And I'm, like, I think we talked about this. Like, you don't even get some of those perks. Right. But like when I was traveling, I'd get airport, uh, airplane miles, and I'd get those. hotel miles. I don't get those. And you know, at least be able to travel, like take Becca out to Seattle or Colorado or whatever to go skiing right. once a year. But outside of that, it, it's it's not fun. Just to not sleep no, on your bed. It actually fucking sucks. It's uh, I mean, it's fun for like a month. And then after that, it's just like, oh, fuck this again? Fuck. It's kind of piggybacking to what we were talking about earlier. I have thought many a times, might have been alcohol-induced haze. There have been <laughs> many a times I've been hung over the toilet at 3 o'clock in the morning on the road thinking, don't die in Texas. Don't, <laughs> don't die in Texas. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> die in New Hampshire. Of all places, not here. Just yeah. let me make it home. And die on my own toilet. <laughs> that's fair. That's that's fair. I um, uh, fuck Delaware. That was the place I guess I oh, did yeah. not want to die in. We we're in Wilmington, Delaware, I've been which there. is uh, Rehoboth Beach is not part of the road. Fuck, dude, not a nice place. So when we went to Wilmington, Delaware, 
our client essentially told us, they were like, hey, uh, if you want to eat dinner, go before it's dark. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? And they're like, uh, it's kind of dangerous around here. And originally, the thing that really sucks is I thought I was going to Wilmington, North Carolina. I was like, <laughs> Way fuck yeah, different. let's go to the beach, right? Uh, that not was not same. happening. Yeah, Wilmington, Delaware. Not a place to hang out after dark. No, absolutely not. Yeah, that sucked. So what do you think about Maker's Mark, I guess? You should probably talk about the bourbon. Well, yeah, it is Drinking Dad's podcast. It's YouTube uh, channel. I'm t- it's not bad. It goes down pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, a little oaky to my taste. I would agree with that. I mean, I, uh, it's, it's not the worst. De- by far not the worst. Right. But I'm gonna. I'm not gonna hold it in my top five for now. I'm gonna say solid top twenty. Back, yeah. Back end. It's like a 7 out of 10 right now for me. Yeah, we've got some more we're going to have here in the next couple weeks that are definitely... I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for the next couple bottles. For sure. I mean, <laughs> well, let's talk about gold standard. So, like, what's, what is your... Or I'll start off. So, my go-to, if I'm going to have company over or whether I'm going to have couple fingers worth or a mixed drink or whatever it is an old-fashioned my go-to is Buffalo Trace yeah and I know that's probably for a lot of heavy bourbon guys that's kind of a starter bourbon but and it might be but it is just a you can't fuck it up like it's, it's a, a solid it's go-to. a solid go-to if you go in a bar I mean pretty much most bars are gonna have it I mean besides Jack and Jim Beam like a lot of places are gonna have a Buffalo Trace and I think it's a vast step ahead of most of that uh, price point, for exactly. sure. Exactly. For the $30 price point for a bottle or $9 for a, a drink at a bar, Buffalo Trace is nine day better than Jack Daniels. Yeah. In my opinion. I agree. Uh, the, the stuff that you gave me last week, Eagle Rare. Which is a Buffalo Trace distillery. Same distillery as Buffalo but Trace. Way different flavor, obviously. Uh, but I think it's cracked my top three. It's up there for in mind for, for sure. For sure. Man. It is so, like, it's got a sweet aftertaste. I think that's what makes it drinkable because, really, in bourbon, when I really think it's one of the few drinks that I think it tastes how it smells. Yeah. Like, you I really. Agree that. When you smell the oak in the bourbon, like, you taste it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you, you taste the sharpness or the whatever you want to call it. It really comes through in the flavor. And. Eagle Rare really does, I think, a good job of actually has like a sweet finish. Like, not like yeah. a, a soda or a candy, but it's in the world of bourbon. It's, it's like a vanilla. Yeah, it's vanilla. like a really tamed down finish that it doesn't just like grab your tongue and say, holy fuck, I need something else to drink just to wash this flavor down. It's uh, not saying that mar- Maker's Mark, so, <laughs> so regular Maker's Mark, there's one that. Back in college, I was in a fraternity, which, I don't know, like a lot of people don't, especially up north, they seem, if you're in a fraternity, you're fairly douchey, but my fraternity was fairly different to where whenever we got tired of people in our house, we just start playing metal until everyone left, which is solid approach, right? That's my kind of place. Um... But there were there were a couple fraternity brothers that I didn't get along with very much with. There you go, sir. He needs a few rocks. Probably a few rocks. Um, I did not get along with these guys, or or one of them, I should say. And my roommate, uh, which is he's one of my favorite people now to like just chat with. But at the time, yeah, I should probably fill up too. Uh, at the time, he thought, hey, let's drink some makers. And then let's close you in a room with these people. Because that's a good fucking way to get me to like them or something. So we were about a bottle of make- makers in between my roommate and I. And then these motherfuckers locked me in a room with two of the fraternity brothers that I didn't really get along with. Oof. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I essentially climbed into the fire escape, which was outside their window, and there was snow on the ground, so I jumped the fuck off the second floor. <laughs> yeah. It was that bad. Uh, yeah. Dude, and my, my, my roommate found me on the first floor, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, oh, I jumped out. I, I it couldn't was, handle it, but It was either that or a fight, uh, and I can't. I can't justify a fight right now. But um, that's uh, that's my experience with Nakers. Outside, so their bottle looks amazing. I think it's one of the best looking bottles. Oh, I yeah. love that wax. Everybody knows the red wax seal. Like, and everybody's got like a trademark or a catch thing, you know, against your eye in the, in the liquor store. And even this, man, like, I like the fact that they have like the the stamp, the wax like stamp. Right. It looks nice. Uh, it's uh. It's all right. I think I pay about thirty-five, thirty-nine, like between thirty-five and forty bucks for this. Which and by the way, North Carolina has some of the highest liquor prices from what I've seen. Really? So you think California, some of those places are mm -hmm. more expensive? Not the case. Hmm. I'm telling you, I have bought, say Buffalo Trace, for instance. What is it? It's twenty-nine or thirty bucks here. Yeah. I've got it for twenty-one in California. In California? In California. Shit. Yeah, which is crazy because everybody thinks California is so expensive. And I'm talking in L.A. Like, not in Ontario, right outside of L.A. And uh, where else is pretty cheap? Now, the place that really fucks you up is... I've got a problem. Not a problem, but... I, I got, I, okay, well, we got a problem. So, in New Hampshire... Okay. You fly into the airport. You get on the interstate and you head north. The very first exit ramp, gas station, rest area, liquor store. travel plaza, giant ass liquor store <laughs> attached to it. And the ingredients are there for a road soda. Okay. I mean, you have this giant liquor store with great prices. Then you have all these fountain drink machines right outside the door. It's like, what are you expecting they here, know. folks? They know. <laughs> it's a great setup, but asking for trouble. Damn. So your your travel's got to be a lot more fun than the <laughs> travel I used to do. It can be. It. I mean, yeah, it is. Okay, it is. We. <laughs> it, it's a lot of work. I'll never make. You know, it, it's definitely a lot of work, but we do eat good. Yeah. Okay. That, that's probably my favorite part of travel is eating because. Yeah. You go to New Orleans, there's definitely one type of cuisine. You go to Texas, you know, you got the brisket and all the smoked foods and the grilling. And then California is, I mean, it's kind of its own thing altogether, obviously. Northeast, the lobster mac and cheese is fucking yeah. die for. California, or not California, I said that. Um, Florida, seafood great seafood. there, obviously. Uh, Delaware, great seafood. Really? But, oh, yeah. Crap. Well, I guess Baltimore was so, really nice. Quick story about Delaware. Uh, guy I worked with, he just befriended this lady at the racetrack, and come to find out her son was on a crab boat. So, that was probably 2013 or so, well 2014 we show up, and like, hey, we're going to, I forget the lady's name, Jane Doe, we're going to her house. Yeah. Her son brought 45 pounds of crab in. She cooked right it. On. Oh yeah, she cooked it. Had corn. Had the whole setup. Came in, ate cooler full of beer. Had fun, guys. It's like four of us. That's awesome. I mean, 40, 50 pounds of crab. Just so is that just like fans that like pretty much will do that? Pretty much. That's so we've awesome. got we've got fans in the parking lot at Dover that have the same spot every year. Yeah. Got to hang out with them because I mean, like I said, they part they camp in the in the hotel parking lot. Their specialty is Jello shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their specialty. Their specialty. Everybody's got a specialty <laughs> in the campground. Well, there's just Jello shots. Some with Everclear, some with Moonshine, some with more legalized, tamed down version. But yeah, I mean, these little thimble full of Jello shots will fuck you up with like that's awesome. Seven or eight of them, you're. That never happens in my industry. <laughs> I bet uh, not. I'll tell you that. That has never happened to me in my industry. Usually it's someone saying, hey, have you tried the Pinot Grigio at this place? 
What the fuck? Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, right? So a lot of the times, especially when I was traveling for work, I would maybe go to like a team dinner once a week and I would try to explore the city on my own. Did my you at own. least get free food at the team dinner? Well, for sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But most of the time, like, there's not a lot of fans of financial risk management. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, so, you don't have groupies with poster mm, boards. Come mm, audit us. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so it was, it was kind of rough, but, uh, you talk to the people that work at the client's office and say, Hey, what restaurant do you recommend? And, uh, a lot of the times uh, I'd rather just go to those by myself right. than with the team. Cause what ends up happening for us is, uh, you, you get a bunch of people that are still in that work mentality. And the right. last thing I want to hear is about fucking work when I'm eating my food or I definitely won't make it to 60. I'll, I'll fucking <laughs> turn my brain into pink mist. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, so, yeah. Uh, I try to explore most cities that I went to by myself, but at the time they were also sending me to like the sh shittiest possible fucking places in the US. So I will say, I will give a shout out a lot of great places we go and we eat at, but at the end of the year when we go to Homestead, mm -hmm. we, go, we go down to Key Largo. And he Where's that? Um, geography is not my thing. So, Key Largo is, if not the first, maybe the second major key when you head south. Florida? Mm -hmm. Okay. Out of Florida, headed towards Key West, but like it's the first or second major key, and the fish house on fucking URL. And normally we rack up like two thousand dollar bill with them. It's like sixteen grown men and RPR girl, and just eat and eat and that eat. That sounds awesome. Fucking delicious. So we go down there and we gorge ourselves. <laughs> I mean, gorge bacon wrapped scallops, buffalo shrimp, mahi mahi. Fuck yes. Seared ahi tuna. I mean, the fucking works. No, smoked fish dip, all this good shit. Whatever, I'm getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> but then we come back and there's a shithole fucking bar, which is always the best. Like, that is the place to go. Well, it's right behind the motel. It's called Sam's Hideaway. Okay. If y'all ever been, or have never been, you gotta go. Homestead, Florida, Sam's Hideaway. So we go there and we're drinking and dollar jello shots. I don't know what it is with jello shots. Dangerous. Yes. So we're drinking, somebody orders some Jaeger shots, we're doing jello shots. And this guy walks up. And first of all, very weird fucking situation because they have us at a picnic table around the side, kind of out of the way because they tell we're kind of rowdy. Right. But it's like eight or nine of us. This guy walks up and he's like, you want to start talking about hunting and all this stuff, like something, you know, whatever he thinks is like, yeah, I talk. And kind of find he's a race fan. So he kind of. Of course. And we, I would say most NASCAR people that travel, we blend in well. Like we're chameleons. That's what, that's what you do. That's how you don't. What get, you gotta do. That's how you don't get beat up in every time you go to when you get drunk. It's like <laughs> you blend in. So we're pretty good chameleons. That's how you not get beat up. It's yeah, great. I mean when you talk shit, you gotta find a way to blend in. <laughs> so he kind of comes over there and he starts talking shit, you know, and he kind of he must have been super fan because he figured it out. This guy started bringing out hundred dollar bills and just buying rounds. At, uh -huh. at one point down, I had four quarters lighting the long necks in between my fingers, trying to keep up with as many as this guy was bringing. Right on. Good news was it was in the parking lot, so basically it was probably a twenty yard walk. Ended up being more like thirty five with the zigging and zagging, but <laughs> right close. But the super fans, they like to buy drinks. Dude, I would imagine so. <sighs> so, and this is, I guess, my curiosity more than anything. Are they ever like, hey, do you have a glove or something oh, like that? Oh, yeah. So, really? And, if, and I will say, so, a lot, 99% of the time you have to turn people down because they're asking for stuff you don't have. Like, right. you got a hat. Well, the, the team will give you one or two hats to last all year. So, not trying to be a dick, but 
I'm gonna make this happen. It's your hat, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times you can't, but like towards the end of the year or it just depends on the situation. So me personally, having traveled for a while and having kids, three girls, I'll look for people in the crowd. Like I'll try to spot people, especially leaving. Like once a weekend's done, I'll try to spot a kid that looks like they had a great time, like wore the fuck out. What do you mean by like kid? A younger? Yeah, yeah, so say like, in my estimation, 12 and under. Okay. So a younger kid that was willing to come sit out there for four hours with their dad while yeah. he was getting wasted. And you made that kid's fucking day. Probably. I try. So when we're walking to the car and there's these kids standing around and we're driving to the airport, I'll try to take my crew shirt off and flip it to them or a hat. Like awesome. whatever, whatever I can give them, besides a few cold beers that I have, I'll try to give them. <laughs> I obviously got to save those for the plane right now. <laughs> got to get through the weekend somehow. <laughs> but, but a crew shirt or whatever it is. So, pretty cool story. Homestead this year, the road leading out of the track is long and narrow. It's only two lanes. So, the guy beside us, we're riding by, beside the same explorer for probably a mile. Okay. And there's this kid, and I'm nine, ten years old. Not that different from Riley. So he's just like barely hanging out of the window, like he's had all that he can handle for one day. It's like, hey, who's your favorite driver, bud? He says, I forget who he said. I said, well, if I could change your mind, I'm gonna have a shirt for you. That's awesome. And his eyes were like that big. And he's like, really? I'm like, so who's your favorite driver? And I showed him the shirt, and he's like, that's my new guy. <laughs> so. I reached out, like, I was hanging halfway out of the window and handed it to him. Well, his dad found me on Twitter two weeks later. Really? So, it didn't, I mean, that's, so, you know, we, we called the traffic light probably 200 yards down the road and hung a left, they hung a right, never saw him again. Right. So, was hoping that that kid had a good experience. Yeah. Well, sure enough, like, two weeks later, three weeks later, this guy hits me up on Twitter and says, hey, I think you're the guy that gave us this crew shirt. That's my awesome. son really appreciated it and sent a picture of his son wearing the crew shirt. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, for all the days that kick you in the nuts and you're, fuck this job, I hate this, <laughs> that makes it worthwhile. Can you imagine if any one of the Checkers players had, like, thrown anything at any of our girls? We recently went to a game together. Right. Like, uh, and I, I know Riley was on the edge of her seat. Oh, she loved it. Game. Which was amazing. Yeah, I, never thought, I never thought Natalie and Riley would like hockey. Right? Hockey, but they, they were, loved it. They were into it. Yeah. Ken was more into, like, her food. The funnel cake and, uh, and the pop. The funnel funnel cake. Cake. <laughs> We're tops. Well, like, can you imagine if one of the players was just like, or anyone on the team was like, hey, here's, here's stick, a jersey here's or jersey. here's a stick. It would have made their night. Exactly. They would have been a fan probably forever. I agree. Fair? Oh, that's awesome, dude. So, and, and like I said, as, as a mechanic, you play a small part in the NASCAR, NASCAR world. I mean, you, you do what you don't. Arguably, arguably small. Arguably small. You play a big part, but not that well known. Not like a driver, not like a basketball right. player, hockey player, but... But that, I mean, still, it'd be like an equipment manager for a hockey team. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got all these jerseys, and he's like, that kid right there, they look like they're having fun. This is going to make their experience a 10, 12 instead of a 10. Dude, and I can only imagine as a kid. It's got to be. I got a couple pucks as a kid. I'm a big hockey fan, as you know. But right. like, I got a couple pucks, and I definitely nerd out with them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, this player at this time like gave me a puck. I'm I'm sure now he's just like fuck that kid. I don't remember him, but like at the time for me it was the greatest fucking thing. Yeah, ever. absolutely. Well, sports it's everything when you're a kid. It definitely is. Girl, boy, whatever. Like sports are, they're your heroes. Yeah. Like there's your mom and your dad. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Which by the way, quick story. I know it's a sidetrack, but I'm not sure if I told you earlier or not. But so. My oldest, Riley, she broke her foot last night. Well, she's she, still bold today. Still bold and got two she, strikes. She bowled awesome games. I mean. I will give her that. She's making a claim for the toughest of the three girls. 
We'll get to that in a minute. We'll, we'll get to that. I promise. We'll get to that because I thought about that today. <laughs> so, what were we talking about, Riley? Uh, winning hockey stuff, and she recently broke her foot. Riley, winning hockey stuff. Fuck. <laughs> Baker's 46 is making its round. <laughs> I'm trying to think, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, so Riley broke her foot at the lock-in, the church lock-in. And so, we go to the uh, urgent care, and like, proud dad moment. Right, the nurse is talking about, you know, uh, I'm not really sure how much this walking boot is going to cost you, this, that, and the other thing. And Riley says... Doesn't matter what it costs. My dad doesn't care. He's, he's worried about getting my foot fixed. That's right. Which I'm glad she thought that because ultimately that's the goal. But at the same time, uh, hey, how much does this cost, lady? Because I'm sure this is like a six hundred dollar walking boot that I'm about to pay for. But the fact that Riley thinks that it doesn't matter is great. You raised them right. Su superhero. You raised them right. But really, what's this walking boot going to cost me? I'm sure it's like $7.50. Because the Medicaid price is like $3.95. I'll give you, like, she she bowled a couple of games today. Like, Solid. without complaining about her foot or, like, even caring about her foot. She was bowling two games in a row. Like, she was bowling the kids' game and the adults' game at one point. So the entire time we were in the doctor, she was she kept saying, "We gotta go, we gotta go. We, we, gotta we, need, go. we need to go to the hospital, or we need to hurry this up because I gotta go bowl with Natalie." That's right. I had a birthday party to go dominate. Dude, that's awesome. Was her philosophy, but <laughs> but so everybody thinks Kendall, our middle one, is the toughest because I'll give you that because I mean literally we'll end a bicycle. And bounce up and say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Like that's her catchphrase. Yeah. Like, no pain is too great. <laughs> but Riley is making a strong, silent case for the toughest. <laughs> because, and this, I mean, this is proud shit for a dad with all girls. I agree. Because Riley, a couple years ago, when she was kindergarten, first grade, had dental surgery. Next day, Ran two miles for a fundraiser. All that, awesome. all that was required was one. She ran two just for extra money. Good for her. And then now breaks her foot in the middle of a church lock-in. Keeps playing hide and go seek for another two <laughs> hours. Right. She told me that. She's like, I was hobbling one foot, but I still played hide and go seek. The chaperones are trying to call us. She says, No, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. Don't call mom and dad. They're gonna make me leave. <laughs> Stays on one foot all night. Goes to the doctor, worried about bowling, gets the air cast, goes and bowls a couple of strikes, staying her grandparents tonight, did not want to come home. I mean, dude, gangster. Do you worry about raising girls? I, I'm, I'm one in. I'm raising one girl right now, but you're definitely a little more veteran than I am. The thing that scares me about raising girls is not that they will become independent, strong women. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I know they will. Because their mom is. Right. So I know she's going to put that in them. And I know they're going to know right from wrong because they already do. But, man, the world's a fucked up place. And I, and I say that there's a lot of good in this world, but raising three girls is scary. Yeah. Because you don't know where the, you don't know what they're going to encounter in, in 10 years' time. That's fair. So, is that my problem? Yes and no. Obviously, it'll always be my problem. I'm their dad. But will I be, be there to handle it for them? No. But, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it scares the shit out of me trying to raise three girls for what's coming in the future. Yeah. Like, you try to raise them with as much compassion and strength and resiliency as you can, but, man, that's a tough place. Absolutely. Like, that's why... A lot of people probably disagree, but we raised them to shoot guns. Fuck yeah. Uh, go to church. Um, I mean, speak with respect to their elders. Like, we try to do, we try to cover all the bases. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I figure if you make your kids as well-rounded as possible, 
teach them love, teach them right from wrong, that's the best you can do for them. That's fair. But, yeah, fuck yes, it scares me trying to raise three girls. I mean, <laughs> partly because I know what it was like being a little boy. So, right? So that's what I tell my wife all the time. Yes. It was like a little, like, I'm not going to say little boys, but like especially like of age boys that are trying to get laid. I've been there. And that scares the ever-loving shit out of me. Like, I hate to say this, but I will say this because it's the climate we live in today. So I'm sitting in the car waiting to pick Riley up from the, from the lock-in last night. Kristen goes inside to get her and I get a phone call. Well, it was to come carry her to the car because she couldn't walk. <laughs> but... A broken foot. A broken foot. <laughs> <laughs> but, unfortunately, the first thought that went through my head was... If something fucking happened, they better watch out. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't know. And little girls are susceptible because absolutely. Let's face it, they're smaller. They're they're not as strong as, as boys. And the way things are portrayed in movies and just the world today, like that is my biggest fear. But but my wife harps on me all the time. She's like, you can't shelter them. You can't not let them go to church lock-ins and sleepovers and stuff like that. I'm like, yes, I can. I can, <laughs> I can lock them inside. I can do that. And she's like, no, you can because that's part of becoming a strong young woman. Dude, in a few years, and you're closer to it than me, than me you're probably going to have to like check like bags before they leave to where they're like, yeah, I'm going to a dance. And then you'll be like, oh, okay, well, let me see what really, like, the clothes are that you're wearing to the dance. Yeah. I'm not worried. I'm definitely not ready for that. Neither am I. You're scared you know of me. I'm having a panic attack thinking about it. R Riley is my favorite, above my kid. <laughs> like, she's cool as shit. She might be the coolest. She's the coolest kid that I know. She's pretty. And, and if yeah. you ask anyone that knows me from, I don't know, like when I was in college or whatever, I fucking hate kids. As far as kids go, Riley is my favorite fucking kid ever. Although Kendall <laughs> is a fucking warrior. I'll give it to she her. She is a warrior. She is. But you're right. I think Riley is... Riley, Riley definitely rem reminds me a little bit of me. Like, uh, big reader, I'm assuming, kept to herself. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, like Riley from, from let's say, three or four. Mm -hmm. You could basically turn the TV on, right before she was reading, you could turn the TV on, and she would sit there by herself, not talking focus. to anybody, focus on the TV for unlimited. Yeah, mine's ADD as shit. <laughs> Mine doesn't do that. Yeah, Riley was like 12 hours, 14 hours. Like her first trip to Michigan, she was two. We had DVD players in the car. Right. Never heard from her. That is awesome. At two, she just zoned out watching TV and has <laughs> always been self sufficient, which, believe it or not, adults like. And that makes it easy to like it a kid. Definitely does, when they're yeah. self sufficient and they just watch TV, they'll go get their own chips out of the pantry, whatever it is. It helps. It helps. Definitely helps. Greatly. And you have two additional ones. Yeah, and Kendall. Is I am freaking the fuck out about a second one. Why? I don't know. What if that kid's an asshole? <laughs> That's the potential of any of them, though. You know what I mean? But like, the first one's fairly good. I think I've done okay uh, through my 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 fuck yous and and potty mouth. Like I try not to say that in front of her. I think she turned out okay. She turned out good. You know, but like, it, the, the next one scares the shit out of me. Especially if it's a boy. I, I really hope it's a boy. Is yeah. that bad? No. I kind of do. Although, like, most of the, most of the boys that I know that are, like, babies and they're boys, they're all little mama's boys and, like, they're kind of fucking pussies. Oh, I know you were going there. Yeah. I figured that's what you are going to say. But, like, girls are so much more awesome when they're, like, little. Right. But I feel like later in life, like, you're just 
building yourself for like fucking deep emotional scars as a father. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fair enough. Yeah. It, it, it scares the shit out of me. It definitely scares the shit out of me. I think I did okay with the first one. And, and she's pretty cool. You know, like we, we, we definitely try to run a don't be a dick policy at the house. Right. And she abides by that most of the time. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, the second one's scaring the shit out of me. See, everybody said that. Everybody's like, just because your first one was good. Because Riley was, as we stated, fan fucking fantastic. She's awesome. She's my so, favorite kid. On top of my kid. <laughs> I sure appreciate that. But, so, as much as, as much as your first one's great, you're like, oh, this second one. So with Kendall, it was like, oh, fuck, what are we doing? What are we going to get ourselves into? And Kendall was awesome in her own right because... She's an awesome kid. Because Riley was, Riley, as cool as she was, she was tender. Mm -hmm. It's that she's tough, and she is tough, but at the same time, it, if she saw blood or something, so she was tough for the major stuff, but she was tender for all the small stuff. I've seen Kendall eat it, and just for the fact that she doesn't want to go inside for a band-aid, she says, I'm okay. I've seen her spit gravel out of her knee, just not to go <laughs> inside. <laughs> it's alright, I'm good. <laughs> It's true. Riley would not do that. Riley can handle surgeries and probe bones and all that, but blood and something small like a hangnail, Riley's done for, which is kind of okay. weird. But Kendall, I mean, will literally take a toothbrush and dig gravel out of her knee just to keep riding her bike. Just so she didn't have any Absolutely. Side. She's like, I'm okay, I'm okay. I mean, Rambo tough. <laughs> like, <laughs> Rambo. That's her new name, Rambo. I mean, she, and she will draw first blood every time. Like, Absolutely. If she somebody's will. gonna crash and draw blood, it's her. Well, she drew blood on you when you were racing backwards. It was that, or maybe <laughs> Buffalo Trace drew first blood. <laughs> ah, don't worry, I heard about that today. Today? Oh yeah, I, I, that story got rehashed again about whose fault it was and how stupid Dad was for racing in flip flops backwards. <laughs> On the 4th of July, which started out early that day. Worth it. Worth uh, it. A road rash in a big way. No, Ken, Ken, Ken is a, she's a tough kid, man. I'll give her props. Because I've seen her, like, spill. Like, just scrape her knees and she just doesn't want to go inside. She's like, no, I'm good. I'm good to go. Just please let me keep playing. You know what makes you feel real good is when... She'll spill like that, but then today, bawling her eyes out, going to the bowling alley, because mm -hmm. she was afraid she couldn't hug Riley. What? She thought Riley was hurt bad enough she couldn't hug Riley, so she cried for 20 minutes to the bowling alley until she saw her. <laughs> so it's That's like, awesome. So they're tough, but they're compassionate. So I feel like I feel like they're. I'm not gonna give myself credit by any means, but. Kristen's doing a good job. Like, they're good kids. They're awesome kids. I feel like Natalie is a great kid. I I don't know if I can take credit for that. I definitely <laughs> try to run a don't be a dick policy at the house. But outside, outside of that, uh, no, man. she's uh, She surprises me a lot. And it's... Uh, like I said, like growing up, you can ask any one of my friends. I work retail a lot, and if I was checking anyone out, like that was, you know, about to check out their purchase, and they had a kid that was crying, I was the guy that was staring them the fuck down until they would shut the fuck up. So not to, not to break the topic. Yeah. But so, what's the um, social media going to be for our podcast or our YouTube channel here? Like, where do people find us? I think we should just try to get drinking that as far as we can on social media. Okay. Uh, so that's what I should hit this at? Yeah. I'll try, I'll try to... This is the very first one, so I'll, I'll try to capture drinking dads at Instagram and all that nonsense um, as much as I can. Um, but yeah. I'm excited we're doing this, dude. Yeah, I think I'm it's kind of really fucking bummed. 
I think people will, not just people, but dads will appreciate just the unwind. So yeah. if we do this, what, Friday, Saturday night? Whenever we can, yeah. Whenever we can. It might have to be a Wednesday occasionally, but just That's the, fine. just the bullshit we, and just normal, <laughs> it's guy talk, right? I mean, we would try what have we covered? We've covered MMA, bourbon, <laughs> kids, John Wick. Yeah, John Wick is every dad's <laughs> fucking favorite movie. John Wick is definitely like the most masculine driven movie that we've had in a while. Yeah, it's way more than Frozen. I mean, <laughs> Elsa ain't got shit on John Wick. Fuck Elsa. I, dude, I have to watch that. Like, all right, lately, she's been on a Harry Potter kick, which I'm kind of excited about. Because uh, fucking Elsa and Anna, like, I can't handle that shit anymore. And, and, and I, I, like, I don't have any sisters. I have four brothers, technically. And, and Elsa and Anna would have been the last fucking thing in my house at all. Right. So, not being in the whole princess theme kind of makes me happy. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, the, the fact that she's watching something else fucking makes me excited. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whoop! <laughs> Caught that. I'll, uh, I'll get some condenser mics that are a little bit heavier yeah. soon enough. Where are condenser mics? They are... Um, I don't know how to explain it. So they're... <laughs> they're just thicker cylinders that look a little, more, a little bit more phallic than these do. Phallic? <laughs> Strong word choice. <laughs> Strong <laughs> word choice. But uh, they they weigh a little more, so like these will actually stay in place. I'm saying I think I might transition to the above. The above? Yeah, I mean, because it can't go anywhere there. You know what I mean? Like it's it there. really can't. And I, I I don't think it looks that bad. Like I'm looking at the camera right mean, now. I feel a little bit like Jenna Jameson, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently she's super <laughs> smart. Apparently she's Jam really fucking rich. Jam you know I mean? Jameson is apparently super smart. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put it back up here then. <laughs> do it up. My, uh, you know, my wife certainly does do most of that. But, you know, <laughs> you know the fair enough. Yeah, we're, we're both married. Married men syndrome. So I checked. I checked on the the fights. Where were we at? Yeah, Cerrone won. Did he really? By TKO. Fuck oh, yes. Oh, knocked him out. Get a highlight a clip. I do not. Not yet. They won't release that for a little bit. So but, uh, what's the difference in weight from welterweight to lightweight? So what do we got? It 147 is... to 135. Okay. Cerrone is way heavier than that. So about a 10 pound difference. I think Cerrone's funny at 155. So what, I mean, he, what is he? He's got to be in that 30 plus range, isn't he? For sure. And the guy he was fighting, uh, Alex Hernandez, I think was yeah, his name. Yeah, I think so. He's yeah. a, he's a young guy that was actually calling him out. Really? Yo, yeah. One like, piece of the old man, huh? He's like, I'm gonna retire your cowboy ass back to the ranch and this and that. So, uh, I'll watch highlights tomorrow. But fucking good for cowboy, man. It's. Um, I don't know, man. Sounds like he got bloodied up a little bit, but obviously he still put out the TKO. Good for him. Well, old men never get the... And, and old men in sports are, is like 30 and above in sports. Isn't it just kind of like sad. So like we have the grandpa tomorrow, Tom Ooh. Brady. Fuck. Who you got tomorrow? Who's playing tomorrow? I have, I have not watched a single game of... I'll, I'll correct myself. Whatever football I watched at your house <laughs> it is what I watched this Fair year. Fair enough. So we got Saints, Rams, and then Patriots and Chiefs. I have a cousin-in-law that's a big Chiefs fan. So I definitely need to go for the Chiefs. I, I want them to win, but it's hard to bet against Belichick and Brady. It's difficult. Really hard to bet against those two. <sighs> Think about it. He's a sketchy motherfucker. What's what? 
Belichick. Oh, yeah, obviously. He's a sketchy motherfucker, but he wins. He's a winning motherfucker. That's the other sort. Like, uh, my, my, I guess my cousin-in-law, Becca's cousin, my cousin-in-law, who's my favorite, one of my favorite people in that family. So he's not an outlaw? No, not at all. He, he's, he's awesome. Like, you would actually, I think you'd really like hanging out with him. Uh, he's a big Kansas Chief fan. So for his sake, I'm kind of hoping that they do what the Giants did to the Patriots a few times. <laughs> Miracle ball? <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Beat them. What, exactly. Whatever it takes. And, and as a Giants fan, I, I know Eli is a Down Syndrome motherfucker throughout the regular season. But like for some reason, if they sneak into the playoffs... He understands that he's playing f football. Right. And he does pretty good. Fair enough. Right? Right. Um, but uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll hope the Chiefs pull that through. And who's the other game? Saints and Rams. <sighs> yeah, I don't know enough. Is Drew Brees he's still, still playing for the Saints? At a high level. At a high level. I'd be okay with the Saints. Beating the Rams. That's the LA Rams. Mm hmm. New team. Yeah. Well, old team, new location. I'd be okay with the Saints beating them. So you're just calling the Saints Chiefs Super Bowl. That'd be awesome. That's, uh, that's wishful thinking. See, I'm going the exact opposite direction. I'm calling a <laughs> Patriots. Patriots Rams? Patriots Rams Super Bowl. Okay. Both road teams are winning, which is rare. Okay. But it's it's hard to bet against Belichick. That's that's my whole thought process. I hope the Patriots get their asses handed to them. It's hard to bet against them though. But it's so fucking hard to bet against them. That guy finds a way to win. Well, Brady finds a way to win. I told you I went to school with uh, Belichick's son, right? I told you. We've talked about this in the past. So the very first year, uh, they decorated his room, like his room, his whole floor, with the Giants nonsense. Nice. After the, the the Patriots lost to the Giants, sure, on more. and uh, I don't think he showed up to school for a few weeks, uh, which was fun. And, and I don't know, man. Lately, like I've. With as much nonsense that goes on in the NFL, I've kind of stopped watching it, and I watch more and more just like hockey and fights. Fair enough. Because like, like it or not, the NHL at least keeps their shit on the wraps. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure nonsense goes on in the, in the NHL. There's a lot of professional. Whenever there's a professional athlete, I'm sure there's controversies going around. Yeah. But the NHL it like, keeps it fucking on the wraps. They do. They it do good job. It allows me to enjoy the sport without the nonsense. Um, the UFC, I kind of hope, I, I, I wish they would kind of keep it on the wraps a little more. But granted, I think today, uh, I know today, Greg Hardy is fighting. And uh, he was known to throw his ex-girlfriend on a pile of guns, which uh, is pretty funny. Like <laughs> <laughs> just throw her on a pile, just throw her on a pile, or? Uh, apparently, that's that's what happened when he was in the NFL. He he. Uh, Greg know. Hardy, ex Carolina Panther. Ex Carolina Panther, and then I believe the Cowboys tried to pick him oh, up. Oh, that fucking guy. Yeah, that guy, he's in the UFC now, and he's making his UFC deb debut tonight. Well, obviously, he's good at beating people. Uh, women. <laughs> <laughs> You're but, saying he's going to struggle against a man. I don't know. He's a big motherfucker, dude. Mm. And the other guy, I think, tried to put play. Richie and Carnito in there with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I mean... I don't know how good he is at beating a guy, but like he, he, uh... Well, he needs to go to Wilmington Beach if he is going to beat a guy. Wilmington Beach. 
I fucking wish I was going to Wilmington Beach, sir. I went okay. to Wilmington, Delaware instead. Back. That sucked balls. <laughs> Apparently this round, uh, so Rachel Ostovich, the girl that's fighting the, the hot blonde. Paige Van Zandt. Paige Van Zandt. Can we pull a picture? Our oh, absolutely. Of course you have a picture of each. It's, uh... No, does this Mac have the private viewing like your iPhone does? What do you mean? You don't know about private viewing on iPhone? I do not. What? As a dad, as a guy, <laughs> you've got to know this. So if we go, once we, once we get a picture of Paige Van Zandt, we have a tutorial to show. Dude, I don't even know what the fuck I typed. <laughs> Paige Van Van Man Man. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not good. <laughs> Let's try that again. At least you don't have to walk down the stairs tonight. That's that's a valid point. I'll, I'll tell a quick story. The very first time I tried to keep up with you drinking during a truck race, I ended up falling asleep in my kitchen, <laughs> snuggling with my dog. Yeah, go nuts. <laughs> So I fell asleep, snug, snuggling with Burger. And then my wife woke me up, and I fell asleep on the stairs. And that's because I thought I was. So, uh, oh, that's not a good picture of her at all. Uh, Paige Van Zandt versus. Oh, there she is. Hey, girl. Paige Van Zandt is an attractive female athlete. Look at, like... Oh, she has her cauliflower ear well with the hair. That's probably true. Probably. Um, That's 100% true. So, the person she's fighting is... Uh, How do we zoom That's in not that, that bad. Where is that cauliflower ear? That does not look to be that bad. Oh, there you go. So, the person she's fighting is uh, Race, Rachel Ostovich. And a Man, few months ago... I can't ago, spell that. So, th th this is what kills me. A few months ago, Ra Rachel Ostovich was actually, she was a victim of domestic abuse. A couple months ago, as badass as she is. Yeah. So, I, I guess her husband needed a sparring partner or whatever the fuck he was thinking. I, I don't know the situation. Damn, but, bro. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. Uh, both of these girls are hotter than any fucking ring girl that's bringing, that's not, that's Nico Montano. Rachel, Where the fuck are these girls come from, man? Rachel Ostevich is hot as shit. Uh, both her and Paige Van Zandt are arguably hotter than any ring girl that are gonna bring out, like, Ooh, this is the round that we're on. Or, or fucking nonsense. Like that. But uh, a lot of this fight, unfortunately. That's her, right? That's her, yeah. That's that Greg Hardy dipshit. That's Greg Hardy that threw his girlfriend on a pile of guns. Which is, uh, what the fuck? Like, I hope that I'm teaching my daughter better. That if you're ever thrown on a pile of guns... Turn his fucking brain into a pink mist. You know what I mean? Fact. Uh, but uh, regardless, Rachel Ostovich was, uh, she was involved in some domestic abuse case. She's still, I, I think, staying with her husband, which I don't understand. I don't get that at all. But uh, that, that's you got one choice. Chance. But, uh, both her and Paige Van Zandt are so much better looking than a lot of ring girls. Uh, I, I kind of wish that we had a ESPN Plus just for this fight. Yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, I don't know, man. That, that's another thing that pisses me off. So, uh, so... Oh, there's all the fights right there. Shit, I missed all that. Dude, she is... Rachel Ostovich is hot as shit. She is... 
she usually, like, the past couple fights, she, like, dressed up in a Wonder Woman outfit, which is kind of odd, but, like, in my, I'm, in my mind, I'm going, how do you make that kind of weight with those curves? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And call me a pig or whatever you want. Like, I, I it's, it's mainly out of revenge because I live with women, you, which <laughs> you could probably understand. Yes. Holy shit. Sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Does this headline say, Kansas snowplow driver dies after a salt truck rolls on top of him. It definitely does. It. <laughs> I mean, for all of the shit we were talking about earlier, panic attacks, this and everything, Jesus. this guy's salt truck rolls on top of him. That's 25 insane. year old. Uh, so he's, he's a fucking baby. Isn't that kind of fucked up too? So like, you, you start thinking about like someone in their early 20s and you're just, do you, do you ever go like, you you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, all the time. You, you, like with, I mean, with like, early 20 year olds. I feel like they haven't lived enough yet, but they have all these opinions. Right? Because I, sure. I remember when I was 20 and I'm like, oh yeah, the world needs to be A, B, C. But and then fine. you live a little bit longer and you're just like, yeah, you're fucking wrong. It's, uh, it, it, it's kind of sad. Granted, I don't know, when we were in our mid-twenties, what was going on? Obama was in office, just droning fucking kids. <laughs> Somewhere in the Middle East. Yeah, exactly. Um, ah, God. I don't know. Mid-twenties. Natalie was born. Not that long ago, but a long time ago. Yeah. Right? I mean, so you, you have about a decade under your belt with a kid. Yep, right at it. Which is... Uh, the Scary. <laughs> fair. But like, you probably worried about different things back then. And then now it's just like, oh, yeah, none of that shit matters. Fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it is amazing how much the world changes in 10 years. I mean, it's, it's the same, but it's different. I mean, every day I worry about school shootings. Do you? I mean, Yes and no. Uh, it's in the back of my mind. Like I feel like the school has a good plan. I feel like they're prepared. They know to listen to their teacher, you know, this that, and everything. But at the end of the day, you still think about it. Like it still happens. It does. And it's more prevalent now than it was ten years ago. There are definitely some people that I meet now, probably in the thirties, that I'm like, hey, where the fuck were the school shooters when you were in high school? <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I won't name names, but definitely, um, you know, some good targets for back in the day. But, uh, yeah, that's fucked up. I don't, I don't understand. The whole school shooting thing? Yeah. But that's, it's not something that, and, and to get me, like, I had friends, some of my best friends now, are the same motherfuckers that used to pick me and pick on me on middle school. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, you just kind of dealt with it. And I never shot up a school. And it's, uh, I, I don't know if it's, do kids have more access to guns now? Like, Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if they do or don't. Uh, I feel like they're more empowered. Like they feel like they're allowed to do that shit. Yeah. Which is, is a fucked up thing to say, but, I mean, I think the guns have always been there. The guns have always been there. That's fair. There's not more guns now than there was before. It was just, for whatever reason... We never took guns to school and we... Yeah, I, just... nev I never once, when I was growing up, thought, Hey, this kid made fun of me, I ain't gonna take a gun to school. No, we went, we settled it. Yeah. 
I mean, throw fists or something. Like you said, you're you're probably more violent person than me. But at the end <laughs> of the day, if I needed to sell something, me and another guy settled it. That's fair. Without a gun. You know what I mean? Like that's fair. At lunchtime, after school, before the bus came, whatever. It got settled, and you were done with it. If you weren't done with it, you did it again a couple weeks later, and then it was done. Do Do you think for us though, like bullying? kind of stop once school was done because I feel like and this is not me making us an excuse for the douchebags to decide to shoot schools up but do you feel like kids are connected online way too much nowadays to where the bullying doesn't stop yeah I mean because let's face it back when me and you were in high school you had AOL and some messenger you know, it. That's about it, yeah. Like, Facebook really wasn't around yet. MySpace. Yeah, so there right. might have been some MySpace, but, like, messages were hard to come by. You know, right. you, you might have messaged a little bit, but MySpace was in its infancy. Facebook really wasn't around. So, yeah, you had AOL Instant Messenger, and you had to get somebody's name to talk to them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there was no bullying after 2 o'clock, whenever school got out. Kids are dicks. We keep we keep on forgetting yeah, that they are. You know what I mean? It's just I'm sure I was a dick to plenty of people back in the day, and plenty of people were dicks to me. But I don't know. What are we doing here? ESPN Plus. Uh, uh. Dude, I I really think TJ is gonna win. Although I hope Cejudo wins just to keep that division going. I think Dillashaw's gonna wax his ass. He's the heavier guy. I think he's, he's gonna. The, I he's think the, he's gonna knock him out third round. Third round knockout. Well, we got a couple, couple more fights to figure that out, but it's very possible. And TJ, from everything that I've read and heard, he's not a nice guy. Who is it? TJ. TJ is not a nice guy. To where like. When people were like, hey, TJ, uh, this guy's got to feed his family and uh, don't kick him in the head. Uh, he's definitely the guy that's going to kick him in the head to finish the fight. Really? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's true. I'm a big fan. Like, I'm, I wasn't a big fan of uh, Cody Garbrandt, which was the last guy that he knocked out. Okay. Talk a lot of trash and didn't necessarily back him up. Oh, look at that. Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostevich. God damn, that's got to be the, the hottest fight in the UFC. <laughs> like, ever. I bet it is. It's, uh, so the UFC right now, which is kind of hilarious, they go after all these girls that are getting boob jobs. Paige Van Zandt. Definitely got a boob job, boob job last year, and now uh, their former, I want to say flyweight champion, got a boob job. Really? And they're like, "Oh, look at that! Look at what she's getting." Which, for women, is just more weight you gotta lose. Fact. You know what I mean? It's just you're making that weight cut harder. But they also know that sex sells so they're gonna get their boob jobs in my opinion girls fight a lot more savagely than men do yes they feel like i feel like they have something to prove i feel like somebody fucks somebody's boyfriend like <laughs> that's how they fight <laughs> that's fair so Nat natalie does jujitsu now okay but i'm not sure that I would be happy with her eating punches for a living. No, absolutely not. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, maybe study something or trick some idiot into marrying you. Like, <laughs> it's eating punches for a living just seems it's like a rough time. way to go. Absolutely. I have no idea how I'm gonna snowboard tomorrow. Oh, it's gonna be true. I hope Becca's driving. I hope so too. We'll see. So Duke lost today? No, they won. Or they won? I know Kristen was talking some trash 
when she came here about Duke losing. They won twice. Michigan's lost once. They okay. lost once today, and Duke still has like 36 first place votes. That's gotta be so political. Oh, it is. It's all fucking political. That makes no sense. I, I do not follow basketball at all, so. It's so fucking political. It's unreal. Like this guy, my brother in law, geeks out on Zion. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, if he could have his babies, he would. <laughs> I mean, if I could jump to within an inch of the goal, I would score every time, too. How tall is he? 6'8, 6'9. Okay. I mean, every time he jumps, he's right there at it. Like, I mean, his hand is within it, four inches of the net. So you better make that. Dude, I don't follow. Oh, when you're getting paid what he is to play at Duke, you better make that. That's oh, fair. shots fired. And what up? Uh, well, like, most of those players play for, what, like two years and then go to the NBA? Yeah, so they're playing for Duke for a couple hundred thousand, and they're going to play for the NBA for a couple million. So they won overall. I think we caught the, the very last couple seconds of their game. So I've been trying to get my niece to say Duke is puked. What? <laughs> oh yeah, to my brother-in-law. He's not pleased. That's fine. That's his problem. Exactly, not mine. Did uh did Michigan win tonight? They lost. They lost. Does that mean they're out? No, it's like their yearly ranking. So they were number two, they'll probably fall. Well, number four lost too, so they might fall to three, but they won't fall any past that. Watch this. <laughs> Russell Westbrook is something else. Fuck that. He's a fuck no. Good for him. I, I, I wish more college players would say what they actually mean. Nick Saban won't let him. That's fair. <laughs> Who won the national championship? Clemson. Clemson. Wax that ass. Good deal. I uh, I was in Alabama the last last year. Alabama won, okay. right? Yep. Yeah. A couple years ago. Two years ago. Then maybe not. Last year I was in Alabama. And uh. One, I couldn't give a shit about who was actually fucking playing. Right. But was it Alabama versus Clemson? Uh, not last year. It was Alabama and Georgia. Alabama and Georgia. Was Georgia up most of the game? Yes. And then Alabama somehow pulled it through in the end? Okay. Yeah. What about this headline right here? Cerrone wins calls for McGregor. Who responds? Uh, dude, I really want, I want Cerrone to get paid, but I'm not sure if he beats McGregor. Yeah, McGregor. I mean, I I hate McGregor, but his boxing skill is unparalleled. He's he's striking. That left hand is definitely something to worry about. Very much. Oh, here's the highlights right here. Oof. Caught him. Oh, see you, you see later, that? Hernandez. <laughs> Did you see that foot? Oh. Yeah, he That right foot fell. was unreal. Dude, and that guy talked so <coughs> much trash in the... Oof. See ya, Hernandez. Is that what stopped it? Right oh, at it, after he, I mean, a right foot and about six or seven more punches of the fucking head stopped it. Good for him. Good for him. I like Cowboy, man. I don't know if he beats McGregor. Look at this. So, oh. That's a shin right to the fucking... Look at all the blood all over that guy. Dude, that guy talks so much trash in the, 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 the pre-fight. Oh, weak legs. He's like, I'm going to send you back to the stable because you're an old man. Yeah, that old man just whacks his ass. Old man's got a lot of experience, man. Anyway, so what? what's your thought on Makers 46? Solid. I mean, 
A little oaky. A little, a little too oaky for me. A little too much wood. But solid. Yeah. I mean, but if I'm gonna go spend thirty-two right at it, right? It's about that, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a few other things for thirty-two bucks. Yeah. I mean, solid but not ahead of five or six others. That's fair. That's fair to say. I mean, I think it would be fine with a, if you were a bourbon, ginger ale, bourbon and coke, any of those kind of things, it's probably fine. I have to agree. We just killed a bottle of it. So it went awful. Wasn't bad, but we've had better. Have had better. We'll have better shortly. I agree. Next week. I'm, I'm okay with that. Woodford. Yeah. Let's review. Woodford review? Might as well. That's, I'm okay with that. Midweek. Midweek. Woodford review. I'm okay with that. Makers 46 was okay. It's okay. It's uh, a little too oaky. I still think that. I would agree. Uh, Which they say, it's got a lot of wood in it. <laughs> I teed it up for you. I was waiting for <laughs> something. The, the presentation of the bottle, the bottle looks awesome. Solid bottle, solid margin ploy with the wax. The wax gets me I mean, every you, time. A unique shape bottle. Like, yeah. you know it's Makers. You know it's Makers. Uh, it's, not, it's not a bad bourbon. It's not bad. I mean, for bourbon, it's, it's not bad. Is there better? I personally think yes. Yeah. I might even, for the same price. Yeah, I'm not going to say smoother, harsh, or any of that stuff. But for the money, if I'm going to spend 30 35 I'm going to go buy something else. Yeah. Personally. I'm, I'm with you there. Now, if it came down to 25 for Jim Beam Devil's Cut or 32 for Makers 46, I'm probably going to buy Makers 46. That makes sense. But... In the relative price range, I'm gonna give it a nod to a few other things. Obviously, the Eagle Rare, the Buffalo Trace, the Basil, the Basil, Basil is solid. Yeah. Um, honestly, Gentleman Jack is 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 a solid. I don't think I've had it. It's not a bourbon. It's a whiskey. Right. But solid, really mellow. So in that price point. It's okay. Yeah, it's 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 pretty good. But yeah, I guess we'll sign out now. It's been a solid it's, night. Yeah. If you uh, like what you heard, it's uh, Drinking Dads on YouTube. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and hit the alert button button when uh, whenever we post new videos. YouTube will let you know. See ya. Cheers.